Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today I am going to do a little video. I'm going to do five tips to help you get started with keto, with the ketogenic diet. Lots of you have written me or messaged me, you know, you want to know exactly what I'm eating, or, you know, you're watching all these different doctors that I'm telling you about, and I've even got another one to tell you about, and it's confusing. So I put together, I've worked on it for a week now and I had pages and pages and I have tried to condense it down into five main categories. I'm gonna start off with what to eat. Okay, let me tell you just a little story. I hate doing this, but I've, I've got to. When I first started doing this, I didn't really set out to do keto. I just felt so bad and I have talked about that in my other videos. I had such bad IBS, joint pain, swelling, like just swelling in my hands, my legs, my ankles. I just felt terrible. I just felt like something was wrong with me and no matter what doctor I went to, nothing helped. So when I first started, I kind of knew, like I told you, I knew that when my parents and I would have our parties on Sunday, and we would eat all these carbs and sugars and Danish and, I mean, banana bread, pound cake, um, cream cheese Danish, um, donuts. We would just do different things, you know. And I would remember, you know, how bad I would feel the next day. I would remember after we went out to eat and I would eat fried foods like, I mean, anything like... Um, Let's just say we went out to eat to Longhorn Steakhouse and I would have so much of that bread, that brown pumpernickel bread with the butter. Oh my gosh. And then we would get um, Wild West shrimp. I would eat some of those. And then Brooke and I would split the some kind of little um, spicy Mexican rolls and I would get a sweet potato. When I would get home, I'd have to take a nap. My heart would be pounding. I would feel terrible. I didn't do anything the rest of the day. So... That is what I was trying to accomplish. Of course, losing weight, that was like in my head, but I had read so many menopause articles that pretty much told me, you know, basically that's just the way it was. So that wasn't my, I mean, that was, I would say that was 50%. I would, I would give it 50%. So what I did is I knew that when I ate meat, I felt good. And I knew that I was going to feel good. And so I just started off just eating meat. Now, when people say that, I think they just get this crazy caveman idea in their head, like I'm running out, biting the heads off of birds or something. I mean, it's not that I was eating something I never ate before. It's just, I mean, picture your plate with um, grilled chicken you know, some potatoes and green beans. I just wasn't eating the potatoes and green beans. You know what I mean? So that's how I started out. I wasn't worried about fat. You know, I wasn't worried about wind or anything like that. So that's one of my biggest things I can say is in the beginning, don't worry about those ratios. When you start watching all these keto videos, they're going to start talking about macros. And macros is just another word for what you're eating like protein fat you know what i mean it's it gets don't worry about all that and that's why i kind of wanted to do this i'm going to do it not as a doctor not as an expert i'm going to do it as your friend who i feel like i've been pretty successful and just don't worry about all that like in the weed stuff so what i ate in the beginning were meats eggs including the yolk I ate cheese. I mean, I had those little baby bell cheeses that I love. I had those in there. I had um, the, pro they'll tell you not to eat processed meats. I was eating the processed meats because that's something that I knew I felt good on was I would get the white American cheese from the deli. I would get Virginia baked ham, smoked turkey, something like that, boar's head, and I would put them together and roll them up. And one thing you'll notice is when you cut out the sugar and the carbs and all that stuff, your taste buds will like just come alive and things that you never thought were good will become so good to you. So I was at the, you know, meat counter or the um, 
what am I trying to say, the deli counter, and the lady beside me ordered some type of bologna. I can't remember. Well, I haven't ever had any kind of bologna like that. The last bologna I ever had is when, like, people, I think when I was little, my grandma would make those fried bologna sandwiches where you put little cuts in it. And so I said, is that good? So they offered me a slice, and it was so good. It was so good. I think it was garlic bologna. So I got some of that, too. So... I started kind of experimenting with some different things like that just to keep it from getting like boring veggies you eat all the veggies you want but if you're like me and you have issues with veggies you can't eat salads then don't eat the veggies just start off healing your tummy healing your body getting used to eating the meats you know, just start off like that. Don't get caught up in all of the rules and everything in the beginning. You need to know what not to eat. And this is a big deal because a lot of things that I am not or we are not supposed to eat and that I am not eating now, I didn't really think about it. Because my mom said to me, I think it was um, Sunday, she was like, well, you never really were eating, you know, a lot of junk food, a lot of sweets. And I said, no, but I was doing it every time we went out to eat. Like, I was never a person that just had a big bag of cookies here or, you know, just ate sweets, candy all the time. But these are the things that I would do that make a difference and you don't think about. Every time we went out to eat, if they had a good dessert, my favorite one is that Fox and Hound. It's that cookie blitz with the ice cream. I would always get a dessert when we went out to eat. Then I would eat the Sunday party with my parents um, <clears throat> even when I was at my strictest times I would always have a bag of the Dove uh, dark chocolate underneath my sink or underneath my cabinet and I would get out whatever the serving size is I think it's three or four I would have those and I would think to myself okay at lunch I'm gonna have a low-carb lunch and I would look up like the carbs on the chick-fil-a chicken tenders and they weren't that much so every day i'm a very i'm not a person that needs a lot of variety when i find something i like i'm more routine queen virgo i love to eat at the same spot at the same time i like to eat the same thing i'm just like that and so i was eating those chick-fil-a tenders every day so it didn't look like I was eating a lot of sweets, but I really was. And I was eating a lot of carbs because I was eating all that breading with all of those bad oils. So first thing you've got to cut out is sugar, all sugars, even the fruits. Now, fruits upset my stomach, so that was not hard to do at all. But I just know that fruit really upsets my stomach, even a half a banana. I have tried so many things. I've tried half a banana. I've tried melon, I've tried blueberries. So right now, and right in the beginning, I am not eating fruit. Grains, this means all grains, it means corn. Okay, that's another thing I would always do. Remember we would go eat Mexican every Wednesday night and sometimes Friday. Well, in my mind, it's corn, you know? it's It wasn't that bad, so every time, no matter how I was eating, even if I was eating low carb, I always had the chips. So any type of grains, even that Ezekiel bread or the Dave's something something bread, all grains and fruits and sugars you need to cut out. Oils. I never knew this. Like I knew that I knew my parents always used real butter and I knew that they had told me that real butter is better for you than margarine. I can't believe it's not butter. Um, all of these crazy things that John eats, quite frankly. He's gotten better about that. Now he has like a, he has some kind of spray he uses. It's olive oil. <laughs> but anyway, I won't go into that. That's a whole nother saga. But canola oil, vegetable oils, and fake butter. Cut those out. They are not good for you. Someone said something to me last time about not believing the doctors, that I know more than the doctors. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. When I was eating like that, I felt horrible. I looked horrible. I couldn't think. When I'm eating like this, 
my life has just improved so much I can't even explain it to you and I think you guys can see it so and I had been to doctors I had been listening to doctors for four years so I'm gonna put below a new video that Dr. Berg did where the FDA came out and said they lifted whole belief of the natural fats but they haven't announced it and just I hate to be cynical but think about it think about how much people are making pharmaceutical companies what he did another video where the most prescribed medicine is Humira which is for inflammation and all the things that when you get your diet right will probably go away skin disorders like rosacea psoriasis just take the time to read and just know that just because you start this and you're doing it just to see if it makes you feel better doesn't mean you're going to have to do it for the rest of your life just try it it's not going to hurt you just to try it and if you're like me you're going to feel so good you're going to wonder what in the world you were ever doing it's another thing i wrote down i was watching someone this morning and i think it was a new doctor that i found dr boz i think you guys will really like her she is totally different she has great she's a doctor an internal medicine doctor and she started out on keto because her mom was suffering with cancer and she found out all the anti-cancer and healing benefits of keto she's worked with her mom she's done herself and so she's into it that way i'll let you you know watch some of her videos but she was saying that i think it was either her or dr delauer he's another one i want you to look up but i wrote down 74 74 percent success rate on keto after two years i think keto is one of the most sustainable ways of eating you will ever try okay things you should eat butter real butter so if i do an egg i cook it in butter i get the oh gosh what is it called it starts with a k-e it's the butter that is just so yummy let me go get it hold on this is it for my it's the pure irish butter and i don't know why i accidentally got unsalted i didn't even see that but so that is what i use when i make eggs or it's about the only thing and i use it now with the kids and stuff like when i do pasta and i put butter in their pasta after it comes out and stuff like that so that is what i use and then we have olive oil so butter avocado oil olive oil bacon grease when i cook bacon i usually do it in the oven and i do it on parchment paper sometimes we will save some of that bacon grease it's real easy because you know how it kind of um is the word congeals or it you know how it hardens then you can just scoop some out keep it in some type of container and even john will use that sometimes to cook his squash and zucchini in it is the best flavor and it's just it's great for eggs too and then another thing not to eat is do not i'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some things that i've gotten here that i have not even tried that john has picked up for me and i just don't even want them but do not eat these hold on okay you guys this is so funny i think he took he had a box of keto cookies and I thought he bought them for me, and I just never said anything because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. And they're gone. So I think he bought those for him, which is funny. That's interesting. Anyway, he bought this for me, like little keto um, Duncan Hines, little, you know, cakes or whatever sitting in there. And he sent a picture of this to me from the store, and I said, yeah, go ahead and get it. And, you know, after I ate that one keto ice cream bar that made me feel so bad physically and mentally, I mean, it really hurt my, hurt my own feelings towards myself that I did that because I knew that I needed to be eating whole foods. I didn't need to be eating junk like this. Eat real foods. Go around the edge of the grocery store. A good thing is anything with, le with more than three ingredients, don't eat it. So, and then I wanted to show you, this is the spray that he uses. It is organic, which organic doesn't mean anything. Even organic fruit has sugar in it. Honey is sugar. Agave is sugar. So just because something's organic doesn't mean it's not gonna raise your insulin and cause inflammation. Okay, but this is what he uses. 
Um, it's a spray, and he sprays my steaks with this after I've seasoned them. And I'm going to do a separate video on all the seasoning that I'm using. So wait for that next because I've got them stacked up here waiting. This is what he sprays our steaks with, or mine. Sometimes he eats one. He's gotten better when he puts it on the grill. So you can also use butter, but this is just easier. 100% organic extra virgin olive oil. Safely sprayed on your food. Okay, so that's what he uses there. Just don't get those bars and everything. They're just, it's just, and, and don't believe the net carbs. I always believed the net carbs. Don't do that. Just eat real foods and that will get you going. Okay, when to eat. That's a big thing I really wanted to talk to you guys about because I'm scared. I should have done this video first because I'm scared that I've like thrown so much stuff out at you that you want to do it, but you're worried about doing what I do, which is eat at two o'clock and five o'clock. You know what I mean? I did not do that in the beginning. In the beginning, do not get bogged down with when to eat. If you wake up in the morning and you're hungry, eat. Just eat what we've talked about. Like, if you get up in the morning and you're hungry, fix some eggs. You know what I mean? Fix some eggs and bacon. Or if you want to fix, if it makes you feel better, fix some eggs. And um, even if you want to start off with like turkey sausage or something like that, just eat you know, real food, read my notes here. I said, don't worry about intermittent fasting in the beginning. And then I wrote, you're getting your chemistry right. In the beginning, it is gonna be a shock to your body because your body is used to not worrying about the, your stored fat. It is used to you always giving it so much stuff to make glucose with and running on glucose. So in the beginning, you're just worried about getting your habits, you know, it's an adjustment period for your mind and your body. So in the beginning, do not worry about intermittent fasting. That is going to happen naturally, trust me. So I wrote down at first every two hours or so, but this changes. And I wrote down leptins, etc. Leptins are a hormone in our body that kind of, um, I think Dr. Boz said they're right there where the food empties into the small intestines and that immediately sends signals out to your body of what you're going to be using as fuel and it sends hunger, you know, whether you're going to be hungry, it just sends all kinds of messages to your body. So in the beginning, you have to get those hormones and all of those signals right. And then pretty soon it's going to detect what you're eating and it's going to go ahead and send messages out to your body that you're not hungry and that you're not needing more and more fuel to keep going through the day. It's going to send that message out to your body that you are going to use your stored fat. And that is what creates the ketones. So something I also did in the beginning is I got those ketone strips. Let me go get those and show them to you. Okay, so here they are, and you get them. I get them at CVS or Walgreens, and you have to go. Usually it's back by the pharmacy, and it's in the section with, like, diabetic stuff. So here is a strip. There's like 100 in here, I think. And at the end, it has a little thing that you put in your urine stream <laughs> and quickly it's not like something you have to wait for you will see if you have ketones in your urine now if you have ketones in your urine that means your body is burning some of your fat and that puts off ketones so that is very gratifying this time it took me about I would say three days three or four days before I started seeing um, small amounts and usually now I am I pretty much hang in the moderate section but I know that I am you know burning ketones and I know that I'm doing something right because I've lost weight I've now lost I now weigh 129 so I think it's 23 is it 23 pounds or 24 I think 23 pounds so that helps me a lot and that's something if you're like me I like that's kind of gratifying to see that next thing I wrote down is keto flu 
Now this is something that I really didn't notice going through. A lot of people say that they feel achy, that they um, their mind is foggy, they feel tired, they just feel like they've got almost like got the flu. And this will happen when you are off of, I remember feeling this way long ago when I would do the Atkins diet. And it really doesn't last very long, maybe a weekend. Usually that first weekend, it's kind of like when you get off of caffeine, if you've ever gotten off caffeine, you'll get like headaches and everything. But if you can just suffer through those, you know, two or three days, you're fine. Well, I guess this is something like that, but I think I had already been feeling so bad that anything was an improvement. So I don't remember, I remember feeling so good. Like I told you, I started this on Tuesday and by Monday, when I went to the beach, I was just, you know, talking to myself like, oh my God, I feel so good. You know, I couldn't believe it. So the big thing you want to do when you are feeling that way is salt. That is another thing that society has just said was dangerous, too much salt. What is it in New York? They don't have salt on the table or something. That's not true. Our body needs salt and you need salt. And you especially need salt during this period because salt has those um, electrolytes. And you need good salt, though. So the salts that I use, pink Himalayan salt is the main one that they tell you to use. You want to use good, pure, non-GMO, good salt that has true minerals from the earth. So this is one that we had that I'm using. It's um, Earth Fair Pink Himala Himalayan Sea Salt. So I grind it up. And then John bought this. And this is probably, I don't know, let's see, ingredients. Pink Himalayan Sea Salt. Yes, garlic, onion, sea salt, black pepper, red bell pepper, lemon peel, parsley, and garlic oil. So there's nothing bad in it, but it's McCormick, and it's the all-purpose seasoning. So a lot of times... If I'm just in a hurry, like last night I was working upstairs and he came home and he was going to cook my steaks. We had ribeyes and I just grabbed this real quick and, you know, seasoned my steaks. So this is very good. This is actually our second one we've been on. And then I just ordered this. This is the salt that Dr. Barry recommends and it is the Redmond Real Salt Amazing Taste Unrefined Mineral Salt Mined in America Ancient Fine Sea Salt. And it's supposed to be really good. I just got it yesterday, so I haven't tried it. But I'm looking forward to it because I love salt. Salt makes everything better. So this is very important. And there are many people, I think Dr. Barry actually has like a keto Kool-Aid that he, keto flu Kool-Aid or something. A lot of times what it is is just getting your electrolytes. And they'll put salt in water you know, just getting your salt will make you feel better. But like I said, I did not really go through that. And if you are feeling like I have felt, guarantee it'll be, you'll feel so much better every other place that it won't bother you. Number five, let me see how much time I've been talking forever. And this is so corny. And when I first heard this was um, with Monate, um, is know your why. And I thought, what, well, that is so corny. But then I've seen it over and over again since then. And it does make sense. It really makes sense with this, especially for me. Know your why. Why are you even doing this? And I am doing this to feel better. And like I said, maybe 50% of it was the weight, but I hid that weight pretty good. And I, that bothered me, but what bothered me more was feeling like something was wrong with me and that's why I was gaining weight. I told the doctor, I feel like there's like a ball in my stomach. You know, he would press all around. You know, it's just, I told everybody, I feel like there's something wrong with me. I did have some fibroids, nothing to speak of. You know, he said it was pretty normal. Um, I've had so many blood tests, you guys. I've been tested for just, I mean, everybody, I've had the colonoscopies. I've had the scopes. I've had my poop tested I've had everything so all they would do every time is hand me a runoff on the paper half the time crooked just sloppy sheet with the the FODMAP diet every time the FODMAP diet and so you know every time I did that I would pretty much find out 
that vegetables, any type of vegetables, any type of fruit would upset my stomach. It just, I was every avenue I was going down, I would end up just so frustrated and still feeling bad. Know your why. Is it health? Is it your weight? Is it inflammation, which would go under your health? Um, cancer? Like this diet is supposed to be so good for when you are feeding your body all of this extra food that it doesn't need, like carbs, sugar, well then it just goes, your cells just go recreating and that's what causes skin tags and skin problems and it's just, you can read all about that. I don't want to go too far into it because I'm not a doctor, but it, there's lots of videos on that. Um, your skin, this diet is supposed to be so good for your, and it's, when I say diet, I just mean a way of eating, but it's supposed to be so good for rosacea, psoriasis, eczema. I mean, I watched this guy, I don't know if I'll ever be able to find him, he had an accent, but he did the, actually did the carnivore diet to see if it would cure his face. He had real bad eczema all over his face, and he took pictures every day, and I think within one week, his eczema was gone. And it's just, I mean, you just have to, you know, look it up and read and don't get too bogged down in all the rules right in the beginning. Diabetes, I mean, this is just miraculous for helping your diabetes if you're type 2. And it keeps you, prevents you from being diabetic. Diabetes is all about insulin, and so is this. This is all about the hormones and the insulin and menopause. You know, just menopause will just, just turn your, what, your body upside down. I mean, I've always had like IBS symptoms, but I think when my hormones started going berserk, it made everything worse. And so this is a good way for me to control a lot of those menopause symptoms. As in major weight gain in my middle, so much that I felt like I couldn't even hardly bend. You know, just the swelling. So, you know, who knows if, who knows what helps the most. I just know that when I am eating like this, it is just a no-brainer. Okay, I want to go back to um, when to eat because I told you like in the beginning, you will just eat when you want to, but before you know it, you are not going to be hungry. Within, I would say within three to four days, you will not want breakfast. Then, and you cannot snack on this. Do not be a snacker. Just go ahead and tell yourself that you'll eat every two hours and you will find that you will start skipping those meals because when you eat real food and healthy fats and your chemistry gets turned over good, it just takes away all of the cravings. You've gotten your sugar out of your system. You can watch videos and read about how poisonous sugar is to your system. I never knew. You will be fine. Do not think that you are gonna be hungry because this will be this will not compare to any other. I have done um, Weight Watchers, which is, what's the one that came out with the fat grams? Is that Weight Watchers? I have, no, Nutrisystem. I have done Nutrisystem just on my own. I've done it where I ordered the boxes of foods, or was that Jenny Craig? Maybe I did that. Um, I have done Atkins, which is very similar, but still not as good as this, because this is more focused on healthy fats and not as much protein, whereas the Atkins was a little different. I have never been as satisfied, as full, no cravings. I don't feel cheated. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world to feel this good. So don't worry about that. So I'm gonna leave this here. I'm hoping that I helped you just a little bit. I'll be glad to answer your questions. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put just like four videos down below because I don't wanna, I know sometimes I overload you with videos and it's just because you guys know by now when I'm passionate about something, I just, bleh, I just want to tell you about everything and I want to read everything and I want to, you to read everything. So I'm gonna try not to overload you, but there's some good ones that I just want you to start with and then you can go from there. 
So I'm going to do a quick outfit of the day. It's kind of a special outfit of the day for you. And I'll be right back. Okay, so today I have on that Victoria Beckham dress that I showed you guys in my closet clean out. I posted that video last night. This is a dress that I bought years ago. If you've been with me, you remember it. And it's, I bought it just because I think I was going to, I can't remember what event I was going to. And I found it on sale and I really paid a lot for it, a lot more than I ever would. And when I got it, my tummy, it's like I could barely zip it up and my tummy was just still too big. So now I can wear it. I'm gonna spin around so you can see. It has the zipper that goes all the way up and then you can adjust it, you know, for your walking. It is like a thick, almost, um, I wouldn't say scuba because it's not that thick, but it is a thicker fabric that is stretchy and sucks you in the whole way. There's no wonder why people love these. It feels so good, it just, I mean, it's so much better than like Spanx or anything like that. And then the shoes I have on are the Stuart Weitzman, uh, the Nouveau, I think what they're, I can't remember, I haven't worn them so long. These are brand new. This is a backup pair that I had bought and I finally got rid of my old ones, but I thought these would look the best with this dress. This is my new bag. I love it so much. I'm gonna just get a, either a small wallet or a card case. I haven't decided, but I love it. I'm definitely keeping it. Freeze, just to keep it simple, I have on my Dean Davison little huggy earrings. I have on the castle ring in, I can't remember if this is garnet. I can't remember, but I'll put it down below. On um, my normal fingernails, normal necklaces, and I didn't put on anything else, any other you know, bracelets or anything because I wanted to kind of keep it simple and, you know, if you do, like I said, if you do casual hair, just kind of keep it like that and anything else? I don't think so. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for all of your support. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out so much. YouTube loves it if you subscribe. They love it if you leave a comment. They love it if you do thumbs up. It will get my videos out there more and it will help me grow and it will just make me feel good. So thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.